This video is about matching up your top of the backswing structure with your swing length. Now be honest, have you ever thought about this before or have you ever watched a video on this before? If you have, answer both those questions, drop them down in the comments down below. Really curious to hear if you've heard or thought about this before. Now, we can split players into sort of two different categories. And again, this is being very general, but we can split them into two different categories. Shorter backswing players and longer backswing players. What is our sort of cutoff? Well, it's all to do with shaft parallel to the ground. So at the top of the backswing, if I'm parallel to the ground or past that, I'm going to be classed as a longer backswing player. John Daly, Freddie Couples, great examples of this. If you are somebody who's a lot shorter in this position, uh, Charles Howe III, John Rahm, Colin Morikawa, you are going to be classed as a shorter backswing player. Now, what structure do we need for a short backswing player versus a long backswing player? It's different. And this is where it gets crucial because we've got to understand what works for you. If you understand what works for you, you could be consistent out on the golf course. So let's start with shorter backswing players. What do we want to see first? If you are a shorter backswing player, and I'll put some swings up on the screen right now, but you will see they all follow a very similar pattern, the successful ones. They will be either relatively neutral, to where what we call the center of mass, which is if I just balance the club on my finger, that is roughly right there where the center of mass is. We will see the center of mass either be sort of above our hands or slightly behind it in what we class as a laid off position. Now, why is this? Well, with a shorter backswing, we don't have the time to shallow the club out. Because we have a shorter swing, we've got less time to shallow the club out. So if we are neutral to slightly laid off at the top, we can then shift into our left side and that club is already nice and shallow for us. Why is this important? Well, if the shaft is already shallow for us, we don't then have to make any compensations. We can use our good leg work, rotate into the ball, produce a nice consistent strike. However, what is the downside of a shorter backswing and what do we just make sure we cannot do? We can't get across the line. Now, I know as soon as I say that, players or, or, or you guys are going to comment in the comments down below, what about Matthew Wolf? What, what about him? He's got a shorter backswing. He doesn't get it to parallel, but he's across the line. Great example. Reason why he makes it work is two reasons. Number one is he has a huge turn, huge turn. Number two is he is very good with his hands and arms, so he can use other ways to shallow the shaft out early. He can use his wrists, his forearms, all of these different things to shallow the shaft out early. So, it's not impossible, but it makes golf a lot harder, and it probably has some limitations to it in terms of half shots become very difficult as well. So when we get the club across the line at the top, we will see the center of mass is now to the, this side of my hands. As a result, I've got to spend time trying to manipulate this club behind me, and you can see as I'm doing this, I'm having to use my forearms, my hands. A lot of people can't do this. So what ends up happening is in this position, as you shift, the shaft comes down steep. Now in this position, every good goal swing, we need to shallow the shaft at some point. So now from this position, the only way I can shallow it is if I thrust my hips forwards, back my hips out, and as a, uh, back my chest out, and as a result, you can see I drop the club under, there's your early extension, and that's gonna cause a lot of issues right there. So very, very tricky to time when we get a short backswing player across the line like this. So if you are a short backswing player, you need to be neutral to slightly laid off. Now. What if you are a longer backswing player? Well, believe it or not, it sort of flips on its head. So for a longer backswing player, we want you to either be relatively neutral to slightly across the line at the top of the backswing. And again, think of John Daly, think of Freddie Couples, look at their backswing structure. Relatively neutral to definitely across the line, especially with someone like John Daly, he definitely swings across the line. Now, why is this? Well, again, because it's a longer swing, because the shaft goes a lot further, collar goes a lot further, they have a lot more time to shallow this club out. So they can then actually sit, shallow the club, and then turn through. Why? Because they have more time to do it. If they get laid off at the top, like in this position and they're past parallel, what ends up happening is as they shift, they pull on the handle. But because the center of mass is behind the hands, as they pull on the handle, it ricochets the club over and it steepens it. Well, now they are in trouble because they're in a steep position right here. How do you shallow it from here? Early extension, drop the club under. Again, very, very hard to time. So 
to summarize this, and then we're going to go into how we train it. If you are a shorter backswing player, we want to see you in a relatively neutral to definitely slightly more laid off position at the top. If you are a longer backswing player, we want to see the opposite. We want to see you again relatively neutral to more across the line at the top. If you do this, this is going to match your backswing length up to your pattern. This is going to make shallowing the shaft easier. As a result, if you can then shallow the shaft easier, you are then going to be in a position to where you can rotate through. So now you know what top of the backswing structure you need to match your swing length. Hopefully now you understand why it is absolutely crucial because it's going to dictate if you can shallow the shaft easily or if it's going to mean you're going to have to do a lot of compensations. As well as this, go look at your favorite golfers as well. Go look at their swings, see if they match these structures that we were talking about. If they don't match it, then have a think, okay, how do they make it work? Like I said, a Matthew Wolf doesn't necessarily match it, but he has a huge turn, uses his forearms, his hands, and his wrists to shallow the club out. Now, how do we train it for your swing? So now you understand what you need for your swing. How do we train it? Well, first things first is we need to start with a drill that is going to give us a lot of visual feedback. So the first drill is an alignment stick drill. Simply, all we're going to do is grab this alignment stick, pop it down the side of the club. Now, I don't want you to spend too long hitting shots with this because it can hit you in the side. It also, with the alignment stick being down the side of the grip, it can compromise your grip, make it feel a little bit awkward. So don't hit too many balls doing this. Again, we're going to go into the progressive overload in a second. But... This is going to give us great visual feedback as to whether we're doing this right. So you are a player with a shorter backswing length. So you need to be neutral to slightly laid off. So how are we going to train this? Well, as we swing back, this alignment stick is going to give us a visual as to where this golf club is pointing. If we are a short backswing player, the cardinal thing that we cannot do is get this alignment stick pointing behind us. If we do, that means the club is across the line. We want the alignment stick to be pointing in front of our feet line. So draw a line back from your feet. We want to make sure that it's pointing anywhere in front of that feet line. You can see as I do that, that means the club is neutral if it's pointing at the feet line to slightly laid off if it's pointing in front of the feet line. So again, it's going to give us a great visual reference. As you do this as well, get some mirror feedback, get some camera feedback or a buddy to help you with it. It's going to really help you because you can go to the top, you can check it, go, okay, good. Look on camera, look in the mirror, look at where the alignment is pointing, and then you know you're ingraining the right habits. Again, if you see, if you're a shorter backswing player and that club go behind you, that alignment stick go behind you, you know you've done something wrong, you need to try again, and you need to make sure you can get that club in front of you a lot more, the alignment stick in front of you a lot more, so you get a better structure at the top. Now, what if you're a longer backswing player? Well, as we know, it's the opposite. We wanna get that alignment stick pointing behind us. So as we swing back, we're trying to see that alignment stick at the top of the backswing point behind our feet line. We don't want it to be pointing at or, or, or in front of our feet line. It can point at our feet line or slightly behind it. We just don't want it pointing in front of us. If we know we're pointing in front of us, again, we're gonna get that automatic feedback from this drill and we can then go, okay, there we go, it's pointing behind us. We're in the right backswing structure for our swing. So the next progression in making this a little bit harder and challenging us is putting a T in the butt end of the grip. Now, why is this gonna help? Well, this is actually gonna harness your creative side of your brain. You need to use a little bit of imagination for this one because I want you to imagine this T is a laser pointer and it is essentially just a miniature version, a very miniature version of an alignment stick. So again, we're using the same principles here, but I want you to use that imagination and your feel of where the club is and go, right, where is that pointer? Where is that laser pointing? Is it pointing in front of me? Is it pointing behind me? That'll dictate whether you're doing it right or wrong, depending on what backswing length you have. So let's set up to the golf ball here. And let's imagine I'm a, again, short backswing length player. I want that laser to be pointing at or in front of my feet line. So as I swing to the top, have I done that? Yes, I have. I can see that laser is going to be pointing somewhere in front of my feet line. As a result, good top of the backswing structure. As I then shift, you can then see that laser is going to point straight outside the ball line, which is going to mean I'm in a nice shallow position to then use my body and work all the way through. Again, if I do it wrong and I go to the top and I feel, oh, hold on a second, that feels like it's pointing behind my feet line. Uh, it is. I then need to make some corrections. Maybe I need to jump back down to the alignment stick drill, or maybe I just need to do a couple more exaggerated rehearsals as I do this. And again, like I was saying in the previous video, we need to make sure we are using some sort of feedback system, a mirror, a camera, another person to help us with this, anything just to give us that secondary feedback system. Then the great thing about this drill is because it is 
just the tee. It's not going to get in the way. So we can hit shots, but we can use that sort of imagination, that creative feeling of keeping that tee pointing in front of us for a shorter backswing length. And we can hit shots doing it and we can see, okay, did we do it? Did we not? Now, if you're a longer backswing player, as we know, we just flip it. We get that tee pointing more behind us. We don't want it pointing in front of the feet line. We put it more behind us. And again, video yourself, hit some shots doing it and see if you can get it pointing behind you. We've gone through the alignment stick drill and we've gone through the T drill, but how do we progress up to hitting at full speed to where we don't have to think about these? Well, we've actually got to take a step back and slow things down. So this is the progression I want you to do when you're practicing to help you learn at the fastest rate possible. So you can do this with the T in your grip, you could do it without the T in your grip, doesn't matter, it just depends how far along or what your preferences are. But what I want you to do is you could tee the ball up on the ground if you like. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. I'd recommend just teeing it up so we can focus more on producing a good movement pattern and not on striking the ball. But anyway, first swing I want you to do, and I want you to video your swing as you do this or have some sort of feedback like a buddy watching your swing. I want you to do a swing at 10% speed, and that is 10% speed. That means that ball is going 20 to 30 yards. So what we are trying to do here, imagine I'm a short backswing player. I want to make sure that I'm in a good position at the top laid off and I can swing through and go through and hit it. Now let's say I do that and I film my swing and I go, okay, yeah, perfect. I'm in a great spot, awesome. Then what you're gonna do, move up to 20, then the 30, 40, and so on and so on. Go up to the point where when you video yourself on the swing, you start to see yourself fall back into your old habit. When you see yourself fall back into your old habit, you know that's the percentage or your swing speed right now where you can't quite handle this. So let's just say that's 70%. In which case, no problem, let's jump down to 60% hit 10 to 15 shots at 60% speed. Then once we've done that, jump back up to 70 and we will see a drastic improvement there. Why is that? Well, it's because we are learning right on our brink. We are pushing ourselves and we are making sure that we can learn this movement pattern before we gradually increase the speed. You'll find the same thing happens at 70. 70 becomes comfortable, 80 is a little bit shaky. 10 to 15 at 70, progress it up. Now it might take a little bit longer, it might take more than 10 to 15 shots, but this is how we move through the stages of learning, gradually increasing the speed, and every single time we have some sort of feedback system. Then after a while, you'll be able to do this without any feedback systems, you'll be able to do this without any training aids, and you can just use that little alignment stick drill or the T drill just as a warm up drill, just to make sure you're in the right spot. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Now you understand the importance of matching up your backswing length with your top of the backswing structure. If we can get that right, we're gonna see the club naturally shallow out the way we want it to. And as a result, we're gonna hit the ball way better. If you have any video requests, please drop them down in the comments down below. I'm answering all my comments and trying to make as many videos as possible based on those comments. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe.